Very good morning, guys. Thank you, Stu. I'm just put this because I know myself. I have this anointing of Mr. Bean, you know. So I destroy everything around me. So good to be here with you guys. You're so lovely. I felt at home. And yes, can you imagine my challenge coming from Brazil, no English at all, and have Stuart with this beautiful accent to speak with me. He's my teacher on slangs and everything. All the time, interrupt the conversation. Say, oh, what is this? That, what's the meaning? What's the point? And some slangs you can just not understand. So there's no translation. So English, I love this language. Actually, well, how many uh, we have here and English is not your first language. Can I see your hands? Oh, it's a big group. Wow. Okay, guys, so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and some words like plurals. Uh, there is no S in the end. It's just man, man. Woman, women. And oh, it's not women's. <laughs> so, like some verbs, um, you know, I dance, you dance, he dances. Why? Why is he dancing more than me? Uh, I don't understand. 645 people dance, but he dances. So I feel at home. This is us. This is my family. And so behind me, you have Clara and Ella, the twins. They are here. They are 16 years old. And Barbara, 21. And Giovanna, my wife. I have been a pastor for... The, I, don't, I, don't not see, I don't say your age. Don't worry. <laughs> And I've been a pastor for the last, oh, I don't know, 23 years. And in Brazil, since 2001, it was the first church I was looking after as a lead elder. And we are in England for the last nine years. We came from Sao Paulo, Brazil, to the big city of Crowley. And now you have a moral debt with me. If you're going to fly to Gatwick, you, you must stop to have a coffee with us in Crowley. Okay, otherwise it's a sin to... Go to get, we cannot go to have a coffee with us. Come on, guys. Yes. Uh, so we came from Brazil to Crawley. I had a friend from YWAM. He invited me to be in Crawley, and we are based there. I'm one of the elders in the local church. My girls, they are all very active in the church, in the worship team. It's, actually, they are crazier than me. They keep saying, Dad, let's plant a church. Let's plant a church. And I said, okay, wait. In Brazil, I was connected with many Churches. I don't know how many of you heard about that. There was a network in America called Acts 29. I was one of the uh, church, planting, church planting trainers of this uh, team. And actually, I worked for many years with church planting and also church revitalization. So the most part of my time in Brazil was uh, dealing and, and serving many churches, mainly the leaders of these churches, like coaching, mentoring, and also had a business in Brazil. That's why through business as a mission, we did many movements on church planting. My wife, she's a journalist. She was a radio broadcaster. And as I can see, you can see by the picture, I have a beautiful face for a radio broadcaster. <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm fake Brazilian because I don't appreciate football. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I just don't know the names and who is who and can imagine in Brazil it's like a religion and by the end of every service in different towns different states I have been preaching and you know the conversation goes to football at some point and then okay let me go for a coffee somewhere <laughs> I don't know um, <clears throat> lovely to be with you guys now let me just give a short introduction about what we do uh, beyond the, the, the local church in Crawley and also with Brazilians. Do you have the next slides, please? The next, yeah. I don't know if I had any idea how big Brazil is. You can fly seven, eight hours. It is still in Brazil, depending on, on your destination. So we, we came from Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo state, you can fit the four UK uh, countries only in Sao Paulo. Uh, the geography is massive. JZL is from... Finland? No, it's not Finland, JZL. Where is JZL? It's around Finland, <laughs> over there. It's in the middle of Brazil. We came from different states, yeah? So we can fit all that countries in Brazil. And the next slide, please. In most part of Europe, we can put everything in Brazil. And we have four different time zones. And I'm from Sao Paulo, but even from Brazilians, the, the jungle or the Amazon is like another country. We have today 3,000 
uh, indigenous pastors planting churches in the heart of the jungle. There's a huge movement in that part of Brazil. And we came from Sao Paulo. As you can see, 645 cities or towns, 45 million people, is where we have three churches in New Ground. So we have three churches, part of this uh, family of churches, and there's a long queue of friends, connections, churches, church planters, amazing theologians, great guys in this process of being part of a family. Now, we have everything in Brazil. Uh, big denominations, big brands, franchises of churches, traditional churches. The church in Brazil is massive big. Uh, they have radio stations, TV stations, and everything. But it's really difficult to find a family. So the Brazilian pastors, they are good, how can I say, doers, uh, good managers. But they are very orphans. So that's why I'm connected with many of them, not only in Brazil, but across the Europe as well, because many of them are coming to Europe to plant churches. Next slide, please. Yeah, I have these three guys. Agape Church, Ebenezer Church, Roots. These three guys, they are half an hour away from each other. They came here in, the, uh, in our leadership conference last June. I think it was June, yeah. They were here with some of them, uh, their elders. And we have many other guys as well on the next slide. Yeah, just to give you an idea, Sao Paulo capital, where I came from, is 12 million people, the, the main area, but the greater Sao Paulo is, I don't know, 20 million is really, really big. And these guys, they are two hours, two hours and a half away from Sao Paulo capital in, in that region of Brazil. We went there with um, a new ground team, I think three or four times, I don't remember. We went in Brazil, lots of funny stories to tell for you. Not now, we don't have time, but good moments together. And the next as well, please. Yeah, we have two groups. They're gathering Eduardo and Eunice. They are in Sao Paulo capital, which is the most strategic place. It's the largest city in the whole South America. Yeah. Uh, so from, from uh, I don't know if, if you're familiar with this or you're just visiting the church, but New Frontiers is the, this big family of churches. There is none. No New Frontiers church, churches in the whole uh, South America, not only in Brazil. We do have in Central America in some movements in South America, but Sao Paulo is the main city, and we have a group gathering there. I have been pastoring this group, Fabiano and Taina as well, in the very south of Brazil. And the next, please. And this group is in Algarve, Portugal. And we're all is going to Portugal next week. And if you were here in the conference, we, we, we had a moment where we were sharing with with all of you, <clears throat> a video about this church plant in Algarve. We've got 42 adults, 18 kids, having meetings in this house uh, twice a month. It's a church from scratch. They are in Algarve, so I have connections and friends in Lisbon. They are moving to Algarve to be part of this church planting, mainly because Algarve, if, if you went there, it's an amazing, beautiful place. It's very international, and we need someone who speaks English this group, the most part of them, they speak Portuguese, I was there, and we need a good excuse to go to Algarve. And, oh, I'm going to preach in Algarve. Like all you are saying, let's plant a church in, I don't know, Beverly Hills or all these fancy places. And plus, I have these groups and, and, and people, some of them, they are groups, some of them, they are church planters or starting church planting. Some of them, they, they came from very heavy, and legalistic churches environment and they are free now they are looking for fathering or, or uh, friendship connections oh i'm looking after groups uh, maybe i'm forgetting some of new york swindon turin italy dublin the group the couple in dublin is a beautiful group they have 160 people and have been um, i don't know the name overseeing or uh, pastoring the, the, the church, the pastor and his wife over there, Liverpool as well. Uh, I don't remember all of them, so pray for us. Thank you for this short introduction. Now we start the sermon, guys. Okay, let me run. <laughs> Customized faith is the theme, the topic I'd love to share with you, making God in our image. I don't know if you notice in your 
uh, school, university, or podcast, everybody has opinion about God. And every day you have a not Christian try to teach a Christian how to be a Christian. Or someone who never read the Bible trying to tell you how you should understand the Bible. Looks like every person, they choose their own God, their own uh, kind of God. So it's very customized. Uh, Zygmunt Bauman, you say that we live in a liquid times, liquid society, liquid modernity. Nothing solid. Everything is shaping. Everything's changing all the time. My father-in-law, he spent, I don't know, 400 years in the same company. He got retired, and that's it. My father as well. Now we change the career. We change relationships. We change churches. We change faith very quick. I'll be talking about this today with you. We'll be based on John chapter 6. So if you have your Bible, you can open John chapter 6. John, the gospel of John is the different one, okay? 90% of the gospel of John is different than Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's not, we call synoptic gospel. So John is different. So in chapter 6, <clears throat> this is the structure. John wrote the gospel of John from the city of Ephesus. And it was the last gospel to be written. And I don't know, some people say 85, 90, or 100 years after Jesus. In the chapter 6, we have 71 verses. And this is the structure. The first chunk, the first part, we have 15 verses talking about the multiplication, the loaves and, and, and the fish, and Jesus' blessing. And we had 12 baskets, like leftovers. Do you remember the text? The second part of the structure in chapter 6, we have when Jesus came walking on the lake, walking on the waters. And the last bit is where we'll be focused, okay? Jesus, the bread of life. We have seven miracles of Jesus in the Gospel of John, seven signs. And for seven times, also, Jesus used the words, I am, in the Gospel of John. So, uh, for, for that culture, for those days, they understood this. It was a shocking statement to say, I am. I am was the name of God, the God of Israel. We, we have, we call Yehovah and all that, but we don't know the name. It's not possible to pronounce the name. So, the same God who was in the burning bush in Genesis, um, Exodus chapter 4, saying, I am. Now, we have Jesus, this guy, coming from, from a poor place, saying, I am. The same word. In other words, he was saying, I am that God. I am the same God, the creator of the universe, seven times in the Gospel of John. And one of these I am is the bread of life. Now, don't raise your hands. Have you been in a very, very, let's say, difficult service? Annoying. That kind of, have you ever sleep? Don't raise your hand, but if, have you ever slept on the service Sunday morning? Like, <laughs> I did. And I was on the stage. <laughs> so, so, all these years in Brazil, traveling, preaching, running business, I was always tired. And I remember once I was visiting this big church to, because after I used to do a kind of, how can I, a consultation for leaders in the churches, but also preaching services. And then we had this church. Have you seen that church where they have a big stage with lots of chairs and all the elders and pastors? They're very traditional. You sit in the main chair on the stage. So I was there. And they were singing, singing, singing. And I was... <laughs> <laughs> Sunday morning, guys. We try to make the best. And then we finish the service. We try to honor your time. And then you go home happy with a very good environment and vibes. But this service that we're going to read now finished in a very difficult way. Yeah. Actually, people, after the sermon, they looked at each other and they said, I'll never come back to this church anymore. I don't like this preacher. It's awful. I hope this doesn't happen this morning <laughs> here. But the preacher was really good. But the sermon wasn't. It wasn't Charles Spurgeon. wasn't John Piper, Timothy Keller. wasn't the Apostle Paul. It was Jesus himself, the preacher, in that service. We are going to read now. Next slide, please. 
verse 66. Now, we are starting from the end into the beginning. This was the end of the service. John chapter 6, verse 66. From this time, many of his disciples, what they did, turned back, no longer followed him. From this time, what time? You know, his disciples, not crowd, not people, followers, disciples, they decide, ah, it's too much, no more, let's go home, let's do another thing. From this time. Next slide, please. So, Jesus sometimes is really difficult to deal with. Mainly in an era where we are, we have everything customized to please us, okay? And then we have this guy. What was happening? Let me tell you in a few words. So, you know the story, Jesus was preaching, and he said, okay, guys, folks, you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And then, ah, too much, Jesus, and they left. But if I say for you, you need to uh, eat the flesh, eat the blood, you know the meaning. It's a symbolic thing, okay? You are from the church, or if you are visiting here, you came from no church or the Catholic Church or Church of England, you know what we are talking about. It's the communion we do every month, that little piece of bread and, and, and the grape juice. And... But now take your time machine. Go for the first century under the Roman Empire, not only the first century, under the Jewish culture, religion, mindset. And by the first time, the preacher goes to the stage and he said those things. For example, guys, guys, folks, uh, I, I am the Messiah that Moses uh, said would come. And the guys, uh, really? Okay. Okay. Amen. 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 We believe. We believe. <laughs> guys, 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 we, uh, before Abraham, I am. And uh, before Abraham, our father. Uh, what do you think? I don't know. It's tough. It's difficult. Okay, amen. 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 Hey, guys, guys, guys. Look. I am the Messiah for the whole world. The whole world? Yes, the whole world. For the Romans as well. For the Romans as well. For Samaritans as well. For Samaritans as well. Uh, I'm not sure. No, it's just too much for me. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hey, guys, 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 I am God. Oh, no, no, no. God, no, it's too much. You're God, God. Okay, Jesus, amen, but it's enough. Okay, anything else, Jesus? Oh, just one more thing. Guys, guys, you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Why this was so shocking for them? Jewish culture. So you are in this church in the series on Genesis. In Genesis, in two chapter 9, they were vegetarians. In chapter 9, from verse 3 and 4, is the first time God said, okay, guys, everybody, you can kill and eat. Okay, you can eat dead animals. You are becoming Brazilians with a nice barbecue. <laughs> Actually, as a theologian, I have a thesis on Noah's flood. God didn't save the salad. He saved the barbecue. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can eat barbecue, okay? Eat the meat. But you never, oh, this makes me a real Brazilian, not the football, but the barbecue. I know South Africa, they have good steaks as well. Not Argentina, no. But <laughs> okay, but you can eat meat, but never with blood. Never. So, why? Because the, the life is in the blood. So, for centuries, the whole Jewish culture, religion, etc., etc., until today, they never eat the, the meat or the steak with, with blood. Never, ever. It, it was a sin. <clears throat> and when Jesus said this, and when they, their reaction was verse 66 that we just read now, they were living, his famous disciples, those guys that we know the names, James, John, Peter, they came to him saying, come on, Jesus, <laughs> it's too much. They are leaving. The guys, they're going to another church. There's another church in Eastbourne. They're going, Jesus, we are losing people. 
So, number one, what's happening in our culture? Next slide, please. The customization. Faith on my terms. Bible on my terms. Terms. Church on my terms. According with my desires. Not my needs, but my desires. The things that I have inside of me. For example, like I said, <clears throat> I not appreciate football. If you look for my Instagram, I have Instagram in English, another Instagram in Portuguese for, for the Portuguese speakers, the, the Brazilians. And if you see my, what's the name, the timeline, the feed, there's nothing on football on my Instagram or my YouTube. It's boring. I have barbecue, I have theology, and I have wooden houses that I like. It's boring. <laughs> but why? Because the, what's the name? Oh, my English. Algorithm understood that I don't like, so I don't need to relate with things that I don't like. Just with things that I do like. So your social media, your food, your Netflix, everything's customized to please you and me. Our knowledge, our families. No more nuclear family. We have all kinds of families today. Everything's customized. Your clothing, everything. So why not faith? Why not church? Why not God? So I think, or in my opinion, these two sentences, they became the most important thing when it comes about faith. I do respect you, but I think, and then blah, 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 blah. And almost daily you have this. So number one, customization. It's like we have a big shelf in the supermarket. Jesus is there, but also have X and Z, and we can choose and, and, and according with my desires. So we have a customized faith. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in the beginning, God create, <clears throat> created man in his own image, and man has been trying to repay the favor ever since. We're trying to make our God the way that I like the service, the church, and etc., etc. My interpretation. So I have friends and the Catholic, I do respect them. They are my friends in the academy or the Catholic um, um, theology and philosophy environment, and we speak all the time, and we are friends, but sometimes they say, Danny, uh, sola uh, scriptura, or only the scriptures, the scriptures only, something from the reformed faith, and I, I am this weird guy, because in Brazil they didn't know where to fit me, because I'm, I'm reformed and charismatic, and then, okay, are, are you a Pentecostal? Are you a Presbyterian? So, they don't know, I'm this weird guy. So, they said to me, Danny, only scriptures or sole scriptura, like we say in Latin, saying that only we just believe in the, the word of God, is not possible. Because it's only your interpretation of scriptures. And from this point, or liberals, we see the, growth, the growing number of churches being liberals or universalists. We customize Jesus, and we are trying to create our own God. I love patristic era, church fathers. The next slide, please. We have this guy that I love, Augustine. He said... If you <clears throat> believe what you like in the gospel and reject what you don't like, it's not the gospel you believed, but yourself. Second point for this morning. When I have these problems with Jesus, customization of faith, the second, childishness. Childishness, my pronunciation. In verse 25, they said, Rabbi, when did you get here? Why? What was happening? Uh, okay, Jesus was, just very quickly, Jesus was on one side of the lake, and, and, and the other day he was in another side, in, in the middle of the night, overnight, he came walking on the water, I have the whole story, like I was saying to you in the middle of John chapter 6. The crown, they didn't know that. When they saw Jesus wasn't there, they turned around and they found Jesus. And then, oh, Rabbi, and I have a problem with this sentence. With this sentence. Jesus can be for you your teacher, rabbi. And a teacher have good advice, and he is. And you can have good advices and good lessons and good information about him. He can also be your savior, and he is. And it's very convenient sometimes. He can save me from my broken marriage. He can save me from my low self-esteem. He can save me from my bank account. He can save me from my job and all those things. But to have Jesus as Lord is another level. 
So their view on Jesus is he is a good teacher. He's a good speaker. He is a good master. He speaks well. He is a teacher. But Lord, when they call him Lord, in those days to call Lord was the name they used to give for the, the emperor. Curious, Lord. That means I don't belong to myself. I have a stamp, like Ephesians chapter 1 says, I have a stamp from the Holy Spirit. Or like Paul says, keep saying his letters, opening them, servant of God. Servant is just a fancy or, or a polite name for a slave. In other words, the Bible is saying, if he is Lord, I cannot live the life on my terms. But, Rabbi, when, when did you get here? I want a God who gives me all explanations that I need. I want a God who doesn't contradict me in anything. I want a God who make my plans work out. I want exclusion of pain, the exclusion of judgment, the exclusion of repentance. Is the most part of people they see Jesus. In his book, The Four Loves, says Lewis, he said an amazing sentence. He said, okay, God is love, God is love, but love is not a God. And the day that this love becomes a God, this God will become a devil. What he's saying, people, they worship the love of God, not the God of love. But actually, they worship their version of the God of love, the, the, the love of God. They worship their understanding of love. And the understanding of love in these days is very childish. Or you affirm me, or you hate me. No, I don't hate you because of the word of God, but also I don't affirm you because of the word of God. No. No repentance, no judgments, no pain. I just want explanation from my teacher. Yeah. Is their view on, on Jesus. So we are coming from the end of the service to the middle. And now you're understanding why you had that result in the end in verse 66 that you just read. And one of the, my favorite theologians, Bonhoeffer, he said in the next slide, he called this cheap grace. Cheap grace, in his book, the famous book, The Cost of Discipleship, uh, his um, cheap grace, his quote is, the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. Baptism without church discipline. Communion without confession. Absolution without personal confession. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship. Grace without the cross. Grace without Jesus Christ living incarnate. This is what we are seeing around us always. And somehow, we have this spirituality of a dog and a cat. If I have a pet, you know what I'm talking about. The next slide, please. Dogs, they keep jumping, okay, around you all the time. And your little dog, he look at you and he thinks. Come on, he thinks, okay? So he thinks, this human, what amazing person. Keeps feeding me. This human gives me shelter, affection cute names. This human must be God. Now, a cat is different. <laughs> cat looks down. Cats are never happy. They're never happy. And the cat looked to you and said, well, this human keeps feeding me, giving me affection, blah, 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 blah. I must be a God. <laughs> it's the cheap grace. So if I go to a church where always I feel that my dreams and goals and aspirations, are, I must be God. <laughs> and the third topic I want to say, and then we are finishing. This leads us to pragmatism and everything has to work as well. And Jesus said in the next slides, please, uh, his answer for the group, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. We create in our modern culture something called secret sensitive kind of churches. Some churches, they understood, okay, some churches, they're re, uh, even erasing words, avoiding words like sacrifice, cross, because this is offensive for people. 
and they would please people all the time, like I said in the beginning, McDonald's franchising, and because we need to please customers. Customer has become the center of everything. If the food's not good, if the customer service is not good, they go to another restaurant, they go to another church. Jesus became a means to achieve something. And when this happens, Jesus is just an idol. So next slide, please. Yes, attractional church is a, a um, let's bring people and con uh, this uh, church as they conduct the worship and ministry according to the desires and values of potential customers. I want to finish with this, verse 35, please. I am the bread of life. What do you do with a God who refused to be customized? Now, I have two words for conversion. To when you say, well, oh, I'm born again and conversion. One of these words we are familiar with is metanoia. Is when we have this internal change. Our minds, our hearts, we are new from, from the inside. But there's another word. And this word is epistrepho. That means when you, need, you are driving and you convert, you change your, your road, your geography. Okay, You go from left to right and you change the place. Uh, it's also a conversion, but not metanoia. It's just a pistrefo. So I'm walking this way here and I have this friend. Hey, daddy, come to my church and, and, and God will heal you. And he heals. And I, okay, it, it's true. And I go, a pistrefo. Hey, daddy, come to my church. And, and, and then, wow, you find a girlfriend, a boyfriend. Oh, I need a boyfriend. And a pistrefo. Hey, come to my church. And, and all this good stuff can happen with you. Have a nice environment and a good coffee for free. Okay, and I go, abstrafo. And we have crowds of people without metanoia. Because the only thing that can produce is metanoia is the gospel. Yeah. And we can spend the whole year. I keep saying this for, for the guys that I keep mentoring. We can spend the whole year preaching Bible in our churches and not preaching the gospel at even once. Because people, they need to understand why they are sinners, what sin is, and then they understand the bread of life. It's not only information, you need to eat. This word has to be part of you, has to shape you, has to be rooted in you, shape your decisions, your family, your future, because you don't belong to yourself. That's why he said you need to eat the bread of life. I want to finish with uh, Romans chapter 3. If I could summarize the gospel. I would start with this chapter. There is no one righteous. If you're watching online, give me your attention now. There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. Our flesh, we love Netflix. We love entertainment. We don't, we don't love prayer. Something has to happen in us. No one who seeks God, all have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. For all have seen and fall short of the glory of God. This is your condition, my friend. If you don't have the experience of metanoia, if you're not born again, if you're here this morning, if you're watching online, you need to know that you are a sinner. And sin is not something that you do outside of you. Oh, I don't have an affair. I don't steal money. Sinner is here. If you could display in this screen behind me all your thoughts from this last week, you would run away. Because there's something wrong with us, inside of us. And the only solution is the gospel. Romans 1, 16, 17, 15 says, The righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. It's a personal revelation. And Paul keeps saying, And all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that come to Christ Jesus. The bread of life is here this morning. It's time to you to repent. It's time to you to give up on your personal Jesus, on your customized faith, and come to the bread of life and to eat from Him and to drink from Him and to be one with Him and change our ways. Let's pray. Could we stand, please? I don't know if the band would like to come. We will. I want to pray for you. I want to ask you to close your eyes for a second. Thank you for your patience to listen to me into this time. I'm finishing. Just want to say, Holy Spirit, you are here. And you can touch the hearts and minds and intentions. 
and you, you are the one who shows Jesus. Lord Jesus, you said that your Holy Spirit, he would not talk about himself, but talk about you. Lord Jesus, show yourself for those who are lost this morning, looking for answers, alone, with a heavy heart. You are here to forgive sins. You said that nobody can come to you unless the Father draws them. So we pray this morning for salvation. We pray this morning for forgiveness, for new beginning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.